it's not that we have to understand every single mitzvah, but Hashem had mercy on us. And He said, listen, most of the mitzvot, you'll understand the benefit. And it's important to understand the benefit because the more you start understanding the benefit, especially in the beginning, the more you understand the benefits in the beginning, the more you start doing them. You, you connect to them, so you want to do them. And then you start doing them, and then you see the real benefit. And the real benefit you didn't even think about. The real benefit is beyond you. The real benefit is divine. You, cannot, you can't even think about the real benefit. When you first start thinking about Shabbat, it's like, oh, you know, Shabbat is, uh, okay, it's a vacation once a week. I eat some food. Vacation. It's great. Once you actually connect to Shabbat, you learn on Shabbat, you hang out with the family on Shabbat, and you really connect to Shabbat, the vacation part, that's like the small part. It's like the small benefit. The feeling of Shabbat is as amazing as it can be, where it gets to a point where the whole week you're waiting for Shabbat. You're suffering all week just to wait for Shabbat. So again, the benefit you think in the beginning, it's nice. But the real benefit you get to once you actually start doing it. But Hashem had, again, like I said, Hashem had mercy on us where He tells us, listen, there are certain benefits you're going to be able to understand, but eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to connect to them and you're going to do them and then eventually build enough trust in a divine wisdom in Hashem Himself and in His Torah that you're going to start doing things even if you don't understand them. As long as it's written, as long as it's not some Baba telling you, listen, you have to walk up the stairs six times, down the stairs three times, Twiddle a little right, twiddle a little left, put a red string on your head, and uh, give me some stakai, and you're going to have a kid next year. You know, all this crazy stuff. As long as it's written, you have a source, you have a book, you have a sage, you have Torah, you have a verse in the Torah, you have something that says it, okay, fine. But the people that make up all these extra stringencies are mamash destroying the religion, and they're destroying people's lives, because people get so confused and so overwhelmed with this nonsense that the religion looks like a cult. It looks like we always made in India. You know, it's like every day there's a new minag, every day there's a new string. First of all, by the way, anyone that has these red strings, they're not allowed. It's not only that it's not a mitzvah, it's not allowed. It's actually a ma'ase goim. It's something that the, it's right in the Gemara, that the goim used to use the red strings for idol worship. So this is, this is how far we are from the truth. You have people go to, I don't know, different places in Israel, to the uh, to the kvarim to the um, graves, and they give it like ten dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars to this guy. Sells you a, a string doesn't even cost a penny. Think you do mitzvah? Look, and the guy wears it all year. No, no, I didn't. I didn't take it off since I went to Jerusalem two years ago. Take a shower with it and everything. It's like, oh, you realize every single second you have it, it's a sin. The rasha that sold it to you, he's just doing. He's just making money. He doesn't care about the truth. He doesn't care about God. He has a beard. Osama bin Laden also had a beard. Doesn't mean anything. Beard is free. But he puts a keep on, so what? He keeps a keep on. So that's why you have to you have to look into it. You have to take the initiative and look for sources. Don't just start doing things for no reason. Don't be a robot. And that's one of the things that we have to understand. So as far as some of the mitzvot, again, there are plenty of benefits for it, and I'll take a question in a second. Um But also know that the real reason, you should know this, it's important that you know this, the real reason for all of the mitzvot, not one, not two, not three, all of them, of why we do them, is because Hashem said so. That's the reason. That's really the only reason. The other things are a benefit. It's like, you eat a sandwich because you need to survive. Whether it's tasty or not, whether it has a tomato in it, or a cucumber, or not, it doesn't make a difference. Because if you were in a desert, you haven't eaten in a, in a few days, you're not going to ask if it has cucumbers or not. Same thing with our mitzvot. Our neshama, every time our neshama exists without making a mitzvah, it's suffering. Because a mitzvah is food for the soul. But the soul needs to constantly eat. So... It doesn't really matter why you're doing the mitzvot. Hashem said so because that's the only way you're going to survive. Now if you ignore your neshama for an extended period of time, little by little it dies. And then it starts, it starts becoming very difficult for you to accept the truth even when you have it. And just like the Rambam says in Shmona Prakim, in the uh, book we talked about I think last week or two weeks ago, where he says when uh, someone is sick physically the things that 
usually taste good to normal people, whether it's sugar or something sweet or something like that, don't taste good to them. All of a sudden, they like something salty. All of a sudden, they like the opposite. All of a sudden, the medicine tastes good to them. When they're healthy, the medicine is disgusting. Which is, by the way, as a side note, it's amazing to me. With all the technology we have today, we still can't figure out medicine that tastes good. <laughs> you can't put some sugar in the uh, NyQuil. <laughs> so anyway, but on the other hand, when we're healthy, we know what to taste. Our taste buds know which one's right, which one's left. He says the same thing with a sick soul. A sick soul that's so far away from Hashem, that hasn't done a mitzvah, and Hashem knows who long, how long. Doesn't know what Shabbat is, doesn't know what kosher is, you know, has no clue. You start telling him, listen, by the way, this Mishnah says this, this, and this. Like, even if it makes all the sense in the world, even if it's, that's the one thing you need to hear, it's hard for you to get it. Why? Because your Neshama is so sick that it's taking the sweetness as bitterness. And the bitterness all of a sudden becomes uh, sweet, meaning the sins, going to the club, eating not kosher, you know, uh, intermarriage, all types of things, becomes, that becomes the sweet stuff. No, no, let me sin today, because maybe we're going to die tomorrow. Live for the day. It says it in the Torah, it's a verse in the Torah, it says, let us sin today, because you know, maybe tomorrow we're going to die. That's the mentality we still have 3,300 years later. He was oh, let me go to the club, let me go to the, uh, play some cards, let me go play this, let me do this, let me bet the house. Let me do all these things. One more shot, put it all in black. Because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You only live once, they say. You only live once. They make it sound like even exciting. The problem is that as soon as that bet's over and you lost the house, you cry. Why? Because you realize you're not only going to gonna live tomorrow also. So, and you have bills tomorrow. You just, you just use the money to pay the bills for the gambling. So, it's important for us to understand the Torah is sweet. The fact that you don't taste it, it's not a deficiency in the Torah. It's a deficiency in us. So, the best favor you can do for yourself or for anyone that's rejecting the Torah you're trying to teach them, is keep going. Don't give up. A little bit more. Another five minutes. Another ten minutes. Another day, another week. I promise you it's going to become so sweet, you're going to become addicted to it. How do I know? I did it. I was the most skeptical person you can find. It took nine months worth of proofs. You guys are smart. Four, four hours worth of proofs already. You're Shomne Shabbat, Shomne Mitzvot, Tzadikim. Me, nine months. Nine months worth of proofs. Nine months of conversation, seven hours. It's not even a matter of convincing me. Nine, nine hours until two years. Yeah, okay, so he's, I found somebody like me. But it makes me feel better. He probably took only two days. He just makes me feel better. But listen, it's a, uh, you make so many sins, it's, it's very hard to see the truth. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.